This is what avoidant feels during no contact. If you broke up recently with your partner and you're going through this phase of no contact, obviously it's very difficult to assess where your partner is, whether you have any chance of getting back together, whether they're moving on, especially when you're dealing with an avoidant. So this video is to explain you what they're going through. I'm going to share with you the three stages they're going through during no contact, as well as different approaches and techniques that you can apply today if you want to get back together, if you want to ensure that your relationship with that person can have a second chance. Jingle. I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. But let's start with the breakup. Let's start with our experience of the breakup. When you break up with an avoidant, it usually comes as a shock. Because usually, avoidant, they are sometimes invested in the, in the relationship. They will say nice things, they will be interested, they will be invested. And at some stage, out of nowhere, it feels like out of nowhere, they disappear. They ask for space. And very, it's very easy to think, I must have done something wrong, right? And it's why it's so important to learn about attachment side. That's why it's important to watch those videos because it helps you understand that, no, you're not entirely responsible for the breakup. And also some people, they are guilty of trying to make sense of everything. And we are all guilty. We want to make sense of things. That's, you know, <laughs> humans are designed to do that. And by trying to get these answers, you make mistakes, and I'll get that um, in a second. The thing is, they will never give you clear explanation at this stage, apart from, I can't give you what you deserve. Uh, it's not you, it's me. It's too much for me. I can't make you happy. And it's, I know it's very confusing. Um, you're a bit lost. You want to know more. You, you know, you would give everything to be able to sit down with them and have a clear explanation of what's going on, what have I done, what, what do I need to do. The problem is, obviously, and I will explain that, it's important to stay in the contact at least for, for a few weeks in order for your partner to process the breakup. If you want clarity, if you're confused, I put together an assessment to assess whether your avoidant partner is basically is sort of a partner material. Whether, because you can be avoidant and be in a relationship. I'm, avoid, I'm an avoidant, I'm in a relationship. But some avoidants are kind of tricky. Some avoidants are not worth the investment. So it makes sense for you to, to assess, and it takes uh, three or four minutes. Um, have a look in the description, there's a link, it's totally free. And the point is to give you the tools and also some tips and insights that you can apply depending on, on your answer. So have a look and let me know in the comment section if you found it helpful. Now, stages of the contact. The first stage is relief and freedom. This is typical of any breakups, but more importantly for avoidance, because avoidance, they are, when they are in a relationship, they feel overwhelmed by the relationship. They, they have this fear of commitment. Um, they, they really, they are obviously very self-reliant. They seek independence. And so that breakup, provides this sense of freedom, right? So they will indulge in activity without restrictions. They will feel like I can do anything that I want. Finally, I don't have to check with you. I don't have to call you. I don't have to tell you what, I, what I'm doing, where I'm going, with who I'm going, etc., etc. This phase, and it depends, but it's usually two, two weeks, three weeks max. So two, two days is like very, very short if you've been together for a few, few weeks only, but usually it's like two weeks. Uh, two or three weeks. Then you have the activation of feelings, which is typical of avoidance. So this is not something you would do when you have an anxious attachment time, for example. This is really about, that's how they cope with things. When things get difficult, what they do, they suppress their emotion. Anxious people, they, they have, so it's all about emotional regulation. Um, if you are anxiously attached, you the way you regulate your emotion, you struggle with emotional regulation. And that's why it's very hard to deal with this breakup, for instance, because the emotions will drive the way you see things, right? You'll be submerged by emotions um, in the context of a breakup, negative emotions. For avoidant, they will suppress them. That's not a healthy way to cope with emotions, obviously, but they will suppress them. So they won't feel as much in pain as you. Is it English to say that? Uh, and so what they'll do is they also use 
uh, things like immersing themselves um, in work, pursuing new interests. So immersing yourself in work and interest could be healthy coping strategies. What we tend to see with avoidance is that they will have, they will overdo it, right? They will really put like, they will become workaholic. And one typical trait of avoidant personalities is that people who are workaholic and they're really like, work is their thing. And it's not necessarily about money or status, it's because they feel safe in that space because when you're at work, you don't have to be vulnerable. You don't have to have into to be deepen, uh, to develop intimacy with people, right? And you can have it's not necessarily because you're the boss, or but you don't have to, right? So you can operate, have relationship with people, but at an arm length, and they love it. Um, another thing that they do, and again, it's the opposite for anxious people. They will amplify your flaws uh, to justify emotional detachment. So that's really that's true typically on that stage too is they'll start thinking and, and sort of, um, yeah, I know I broke up with him or her because they don't floss. <laughs> I broke up with them because uh, they never um, closed the cupboard. They, and so they would have this sort of narrative to help them validate this decision. For anxious people, perhaps it's your case, it's the other way around. You will be fixated on all the positive things. You will put your partner on a pedestal. He's done all of these things. He said all of those things, forgetting about the things that they were not so great about. So the whole point is finding the right balance. A healthy relationship is really about the balance. Being a secure attachment, a securely attached couple, it's really about finding the balance between avoidance, high avoidance, and um, low anxiety. Now, stage three is really about moving forward. So what do they do? They will isolate themselves even further. So a lot of people refer avoidant as islands. I'm on my island. Rest of the world is the problem. I feel safe on my island. It's very hard for me to connect. So they will isolate themselves. They will potentially repeat a patterns with new partners. So they will potentially, and it happens, rebound with someone. And usually what they do is that they will rebound and they will try to replay the early stages of the relationship where you didn't have any form of commitment. The thing is, obviously, this relationship will fail because as the relationship progresses, they'll feel overwhelmed and they feel that they don't necessarily want this. They will, if your relationship matters, and again, it depends on the, have a look on the assessment. If they feel any form of nostalgia, they will start to reconsider the relationship. Being an avoidant doesn't mean that they can't love. Being an avoidant means I desperately want to be attached to someone, but I'm scared of being attached to someone. And so the fear of intimacy, the fear of commitment, will I will self-sabotage the relationship because it's too scary. And usually in the context of breakups, it's usually about fear. It's not about feelings. Um, people break up in the context of avoidant anxious, not because they have no feelings anymore, sometimes because of resentment, most of the time is because of fear. Fear of being de of depending on someone, fear that you depend on me. Um, and this stage, so obviously, unfortunately, I don't have a specific time frame because every situation is unique. Your partner is unique, you are unique, but it, it, it takes a few weeks. And what is sure, which is very specific of avoidance, it takes longer. It takes longer for them to process emotion, because as they are suppressing those emotions, for them to realize this fear of missing out takes more time. Because also, if you compare with someone who has an anxious attachment style, being alone is less painful. They, as they prefer, they like to be self-sufficient. Not having you around won't be as painful as you if you have an anxious attachment style, not having your partner around. But at some stage, they will realize what they're missing. They will realize because they want to be in a relationship, they want to love, they will realize that there's something missing from their life. And gradually, they'll start to realize that this thing is actually very important. Also, what you have to take into account, and it's a part of the quiz, the assessment as well, is how old is your partner? Because don't make get me wrong, it's very hard for an avoidant who is in the his or her 20s, to feel the need to commit. 
because of societal um, pressure and sort of life stages, when you're in your 20s and you're avoidant, there's no way you would commit. And you would want to get not as many experiences as possible, but you won't feel the, the need or the interest of committing. If you are in your 30s, 40s, etc., this is where you start asking yourself, what do I want really? Maybe there's something wrong with me and I need to work on that. Now, there's something very important. The time it takes for your ex to realize what they've lost has nothing to do with any form of letters, communication, or things that you would say or do towards them. Sometimes there's this idea like there must be a secret door that I can access that will make them realize what they've lost. No, because the problem is anytime you enter their world, you are controlling, you are telling them, please look at that, please look at this. And even though, yes, you have a point, the fact that you're holding their hands to look at this will be perceived as negative from the hand. So, you know, in other words, they need to be convinced. They need to look at this themselves. If you are the one telling them what to do, they will perceive like, ah, you're trying to control me. I don't want this. So it's very important. It's not, it's really, there's no correlation with the quality of the letter, the word, etc. about what you said. Let me explain in a second what you should be doing in order to get back together. But before that, let's discuss about coping strategies. Obviously, avoid showing any form of desperation or anxiety. Because if you do, and sometimes people have this approach, they tell their ex, ah, I can't be without you. I'm, I'm desperate, I'm depressed. Um, you know, see how much I suffer. Thinking that if they see you like this, they will feel empathetic and change their mind. It will have the opposite effect. If they see you suffer, because they have no clue on how to help and soothe someone who suffers, that will freak them out. Okay. Again, this is coming from your ways of looking at things. If you have an anxious attachment style and you see someone uh, suffering, someone crying, you would be you know, the one taking care of them, uh, trying to soothe them, etc. For an avoidant, they will be like, wow, this is too much for me. I don't want this. So it's important to maintain no contact. Um, because you want your ex to go through those stages. If you break no contact too early and they haven't really started to feel nostalgic about the relationship, you're back to the breakup situation. You're back to, okay, I don't want this. I don't want to be uh, depending on someone. I want my freedom. I feel overwhelmed, etc., etc., etc. You have to be patient. And rather than thinking like, oh, okay, I need to wait three months and hope for the best, Use this time to focus on self-improvement. Maybe there are things you need to work on in terms of your insecurities. Maybe there are things you need to work on in terms of your lifestyle, uh, your personal goals, and so on and so forth. It's very important for you to look at this time apart as a way for you to do things that you haven't done so far in your life, that you haven't implemented. Or maybe discover things that you haven't really put the effort or the attention to. It's definitely the most important time in your life right now. Use this time and do this rather than waiting. Because if you're passive, you will be submerged by negative emotion. You will feel he or she holds the solution to my happiness. This is not what you have to do. You have to design your life, be proactive and take action. So a quick word on understanding your avoidant takes. You have to recognize that they have emotions, but they struggle to express them. And that's why you feel he doesn't care. <laughs> There's no chance. Oh, he already moved on or she moved on. I feel so much in pain and I show it. I'm very transparent, but for them, nothing. So it means they don't feel anything. That's very much different. They're blocking. They don't want to be seen as vulnerable. Understand that this lack of showing or being transparent is something that they got from uh, past experiences or childhood and that influenced their attachment style because maybe when they're younger they couldn't be uh, vulnerable they were told you know you don't show any emotion you're strong boys don't cry or this kind of stuff 
And so this is why avoidant need more time. And in the context of uh, getting back with an avoidant, it takes usually way more time than we expect. And the time it takes, it's not because it takes longer that you have less chance. Right? If you feel like, oh, it's been three months, I have no news, that doesn't mean that you're never going to get back together. It takes a lot of time. And if you are meant to be together, if your relationship was strong and meaningful, you'll end up together. It's just a question of finding the right space for them to reflect, for them to realize what they've lost. Okay? And for you, because it's not only about them, for you to work on your insecurities, maybe see a therapist and, and find ways for you to develop this emotional resilience that we discussed before. So the outcomes is that your ex will potentially reach out. Is it guaranteed? No. But your ex usually avoidant will reach out again if we are in the context of uh, a relationship that really mattered. Um, they might get stuck in avoidance patterns on and off because they have this deep need of, I want to be loved. I want this to work, but I'm scared. Okay. So there's a phase of about, it depends, but a couple of months where you have this on and off. And your job is to really be as strong and secure as possible. Like ensuring that you are creating the safe space for them to move forward, for them to trust the process. Now, the success depends also on their ability to address and resolve internal conflict. If after this phase of no contact, they still believe intimacy is bad. They still believe being, you know, communicate your needs with your partner is bad. This person is not the right person for you because he or she will never meet your needs. And you have to come to terms with that. Being avoidant is not the end of the world. I'm not saying this because I'm an avoidant, <laughs> but being an avoidant or being an anxious, that's not the problem. The problem is that not doing the work to be on the same page as your partner, not doing the work to understand our limitation and understand how can we be accountable and, and sort of responsible for our own, what we bring to the relationship. And so if that person is, okay, I'm like this, take it or leave it, well, you have to leave it. So my view as an avoidant, uh, patience, understanding is crucial because again, as I said at the beginning, it's very easy to think it's because of me. I must have said something. I must have done something. And we try, we dwell on the past. We try to replay the scenarios. And that makes you more anxious. It has nothing to do with you. It's a, obviously 50-50, maybe 60% them. But it's really about their attachment style. It's really about their fear of commitment or fear of the, the lack of, of freedom in the relationship. Their behaviors will change over time. But that requires, as I said, effort and self-awareness from their part. You're watching this video, so you're doing the work, learning and being more self-aware of what's going on. Now, it's also <laughs> their obligation to do that work on their own. You can only control your actions. You can only control your thoughts. The problem with no contact is that we feel that the other one has the solution, all the keys. So focusing on your side of your life is the only thing that you can do anyway. And developing a secure attachment style to maximize your chances of getting back together. No contact is essential. It's essential if you want to get back with an avoidant. Uh, because you want them to have that space for them to process their emotions. It's also helpful for you because you can heal from this breakup. When you're in touch with someone, you create cognitive dissonance. You create... Um, dissatisfaction because you send something you expect and you don't get what you expect from the because it's always this on and off especially right after the breakup so it's, it's important to to have a phase of the contact understand that this is a phase this no contact will not be in the contact forever uh, the pain that you're experiencing right now will be top right in six months time let's say worst case you know in six months time you won't feel as anxious as you are now because of the contact, because you're doing the work, because you're taking action, right? You're implementing a new form of lifestyle, emotional regulation and so on, healthy coping strategies. 
And regardless whether you get back or not, you will be stronger. I guarantee if you do the work in six months time, you'll feel better. Now, you also have to understand it's a question of timing. And when we are scared, when we are anxious, there's always an urge to communicate, to look at their social media and so on and so forth. So don't let the fear make decisions for you. And if you feel it's really hard to do it on your own, if you feel there are so many questions, if you feel, yes, but my situation is unique, yes, but um, he said this or she said that, and I want to clarify whether I'm wasting my time or not, give me a call. I've um, recently decided to open, open a few 15-minute uh, calls in my diary to discuss with my community. So if you want to have a chat with me, discuss about how I can help you, if I can help you, have a look at the description. The description has a link. And I will see you next time. Take care.